remember uh, which medals we got there. But uh, Veronica Garces uh, and her coach right now is Coach Kaloy Padilla, both are from the National University, a powerhouse of Taekwondo in the Philippines. They've won three back-to-back championships, and uh, Veronica Garces has been a mainstay of the last two ones. She's a tall, great fighter, stand-up the Philippines. And she uh, will be able to uh, structure wares here at Southeast Asian Games uh, at the newly refurbished United Kingdom Stadium. That could be one of the main reasons why the Philippines is doing so well in international competitions. The fact that they have a collegiate tournament which goes on oh, yeah. year round. And so the athletes from the Philippines actually have a lot of competitions to be able to participate in. Aside from the University of uh, Athletic Association of the Philippines, uh, players of Eddie also play at the be- uh, sort of uh, it's a, uh, a monthly tournament which they hold in the, in the balls actually uh, under the sponsorship of uh, of uh, the MVP Foundation uh, Meralco so it's pretty good they have private sector and government support all the to one and now we're seeing the, the first uh, action Indonesia aggressive pushing uh, the Philippine player uh to make a mistake. No score yet. First couple of seconds here. They're probing, actually. Although I can see that the Philippine fighters score the back and forth. If I could do this, of course, though, uh, with a back and forth fight of their own. As uh, Dice is coming in. Early lead here by Indonesia. Philippines with a fancy program here in Taekwondo has actually collected so many medals. They got four medals in the first day, three gold medals in day number two. Indonesia, no uh, walk uh, in the park, uh, as I said earlier. They have a powerful Taekwondo program of their own, uh, in which uh, they have a major grassroots program all over the Indonesian islands as well. And they have actually both in Pumps and Kiru, they have uh, distinguished themselves in international competitions, not just in Asia, even in the world, together with Thailand. Thailand also a powerhouse in the sport of Taekwondo, in the Southeast Asian region. There's still basically uh, exchange of probing things, uh, both the side thing and the roundhouse. Nobody's throwing anything uh, uh, with any tension chip. Under 30 seconds to play here in our first. In fact, I think they're really assessing each other's style for now. Well, there's still two more rounds to play. These assessment periods are looking what kind of kick each has. You know, and, uh, if it's something to watch out for and what can counter against it. And that will end the first round. I think even that first two points uh, scored by Indonesia was courtesy of just that, that quick exchange you had at the, at the word go. Uh, it wasn't even, uh, I don't think it was even on purpose uh, for something in which uh, one uh, girl kicked and the other one sort of countered, and there you go. Uh, there was a quick uh, two points. Because the whole round, I just saw them probing. Each other out. You expect a little bit more action I from the second? I'm just watching the body language of the coaches in Egypt. I could see that both are saying that, okay, uh, we've done with the fencing. We probe inside and try to go from downstairs immediately upstairs, sort of. Uh, uh, this time to try to up the action, uh, rev up the game a bit. They, uh, they, they feel they already gauged each other's defenses and uh, offensive capabilities. Let's expect a little bit more action in the second round. Both fires being called to the match for round number two as it stands. It's a two-point lead for Indonesia at two to nothing. Get a good shot there of Morrison, one of the gins from the Philippines. Won one gold uh, the other day. The Indonesia player will become more offensive if you watch the punch there. Which didn't, uh, which didn't register. Okay, I 
see uh, I saw that output kick uh we can three points for the Philippine girl prices. These two girls now uh, I wish I was mention to you the speed now that the teacher will be seeing this day today. You can tell that they can actually watch this from any angle, whether inside or outside. These girls are not into quickness, if you also notice, they're the exchange two shot forty five in both the score. I don't know the introduction what did it, but uh, I could hear the impact uh, when she threw it. That was a punch that the introduction threw, but I uh, get it in the lab. There's another one. It's a classic uh, uh, against the arm of the Philippine girl. They expected the Philippines to change their strategy to be a little bit more aggressive in the second. That's exactly what happened here. There you go. She, and she's, uh, uh, what I like about this is she gets a combination. See? And then he just got a score in there. there. And, and now with that head kick, head, head, head kick, she left. She's, she's got the lead. That's a long roundhouse. It's a long, flicking roundhouse. Looks like Indonesia was playing possum there for a little bit with the blue armor now. Yeah, yeah. Pouring it on and now establishes another two point lead. That's part of the strategy. You lull your opponent to complacency and then launch your attack. So oh, there was a head kick. Did you need to score that? That was a head kick. Uh, did not score. And then, uh, the, yeah, right. You yeah, didn't put the. Uh, was assessed and got two. She uh, 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 back like 45, but she fell and got two again. It is now 10 to 6 because of those two balls from the Philippines. It's not an insurmountable lead, but as you can see, the Indonesian girl's veteran prowess is now uh, shining through, uh, if I may say so. Uh, she's able to basically uh, whip up the inside, whip up the kicking range. She can actually uh, score against the Filipino, although that, you know, that's uh, Pauline Lopez, who scored the scintillating gold medal finish uh, the other day for the Philippines. May we request everyone. Black photography is not allowed. That one, uh, the Indonesian girl was able to score with a cutting kick, uh, side kick, which uh, knocked the uh, guys down, and thus earned her a cup two, the latter a cup two. Here we go, the third and final round. As we have Indonesia opening up a four point lead. The Indonesian girl was now. I think she will not play safe. She'll pad her lead further. If the Garces has her work cut out for her, she now has to go with her own head kicks and try to score to get uh, close to the gap. So she's just how aggressive the Philippines yeah. wants to start she's off the second. She's looking up the, the, the 45 of the roundhouse. That's going to score there for the Philippines. Three points. See, those quick roundhouses are dangerous so far as the scoring aspect is concerned because uh, it's hard to defend against those even if you raise your hand uh, as soon as it hits the hit here it will register and there you go the Philippines already has a, uh, a, uh, a tied score almost a minute gone here Third and final round, we are tied at 10. The Indonesia stymieing uh, Garza's attacks with a left leg counter, and then she launches her own uh, counter. And there you go, the Philippine falls into the counter and scores. That head kick will give her three points, and, and then three point follows lead. it up with a punch. And the lead has been increased to four. 55 seconds. Oh, the Indonesian player uh, gets a tag to get there. With a, with a, that was more of us, uh, a full ball kick, as they say. A reverse from the uh, roundhouse. And the lead is now up and to seven. What a comeback here uh, from the Philippines. A reversal of fortunes there. But remember, what transpired in round number two, almost the same thing. Yes. And Indonesia was able to score once again and maintain that lead. Uh, this 